Good morning, Cedar Creek. Good morning, Cedar Creek. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Put your hands together. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If God has done something for you this morning, clap your hands. If you're blessed and you know it, stand to your feet and clap your hands. This is the day that the Lord has made. We come to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we come right now to say thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, that you have blessed us to see another day, another day we have never seen, another day we'll never see before. And for that, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for watching over us all through the night, Lord God, and touching us this morning, Lord God. By no, no goodness of our own, Lord God, we are not worthy. But you are good, Lord God, and your mercies endure forever. You are a good God. And you touched us, you breathed, you breathed into us, Lord God, and allow us to see another day. And for that, we say thank you. We thank you for letting us gather together and worship together another Sunday, Lord God, for bringing us from one week to the next. And for that, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for being able to be in our right minds on this morning, for being able to put on our clothes and shoes, Lord God, this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for the food that you put on our table, Lord God and the shelter that you've placed over our heads. We don't take it lightly. We say thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for being a good God, a merciful God, a righteous God, a forgiving God. We thank you for forgiving us of our sins, Lord God. Anything we've done or said or thought that wasn't pleasing in your sight, we continue to ask you for forgiveness. But we come today, Lord God, to give you the glory, honor, and praise. Holy Spirit, have your way on today. Move throughout this place like never before. Somebody came to hear a word from you, Lord God. Somebody's going through something right now, Lord God, and they need to hear from you. So we say, speak, Lord. Move throughout this place, Lord God. Touch the hearts of your people, Lord God. Whatever they be, may, may be going through, Lord God, allow them to leave it at your feet, Lord God, and take back what you want for us, for, for us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the man of God that's going to stand before us on today with the word. We pray, Lord God, that you touch him, anoint him afresh, even now in the name of Jesus. Allow us, Lord God, to open our hearts and minds to receive your word on today. Bless this praise team and musicians and everyone who, who's here, Lord God, under the sound of our, my voice. Those who are watching via social media, Lord God, bless them. Those who cannot be in the, the house right now, Lord God, we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that you continue to heal the sick, Lord God. To continue to comfort those who are going through bereavement in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We're going to give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. The scripture reading will be coming from the 150th Psalm, a familiar song. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty permanent. Permanent. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I don't think y'all heard me. Let everything that has breath. If you're in here on today, you got breath in your body. Open up your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. Open up your mouth, your mouth and give God some praise. Open up your mouth and give God a hallelujah. Amen. Y'all are going in and worship with the praise team this morning. Amen. 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 If you woke up this morning with the spirit of the Lord moving in your soul,
up this morning. You should be standing with your hands in the air, telling them how much you thank him, how much you love him. And if you love him this morning, just say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus.
Sister Felicia Shell is winning her battle. Sister Marinetta Garvey, she's winning her battle. Brother Sam Brown is winning his battle. Brother Lewis Anderson is winning his battle. And even Brother Dale Booker, he's winning his battle too in the name of Jesus Christ. And so any others that we don't know, it's not because we are disregarding you. We just don't know to put you on the prayer list, but we put it in the atmosphere. So whatever your request is, your need right now, I dare you just to throw it up in the atmosphere right now. Come on, come on, come on, put some volume to it. Put it in the, come on, out of your mouth. That's why, that's how blind Bartimaeus is not his sight because he said, Lord, I need to see. I, I need to see. God said, what do you want me to do for you? He's asking you that today, see the creed. What do you want me to do for you? Come on, it's got to come out of your mouth. So just take a moment right now and just, you you in your own personal space. Nobody ain't listening because they got their own stuff to ask asking God for. So let's just take about 60 seconds on your own and you begin to pray and ask God for what you need right now. Come on, Zion. Come on, come on, Zion. Hallelujah. Come on, go get what you need right now. Come on, come on. Open up your mouth and talk to your father. Talk to him. Talk to him. His ears are open. His ears are open to his people. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hear us, hear us, Lord. Open your ears and cry your ears, God, to your people. Come on, hear our cry, Lord. Come on, you got to cry in order for him to hear it. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you telling you thank you. We come to you saying, God, we need you right now. And we say, Lord, have your way in our lives right now. Whatever it is that you need from us to do right now, God, we give you our heart. We give you our mind. We give you our soul. God, you've got complete control. So we say, Lord, have your way. God, move by your power. Move by your anointing. Move by your spirit, God. Every person that's dealing with something right now, God, we give it over to you. And we say, Lord, Lord, have your way. Lord, handle it. Lord, fix it. 
Lord, make it right. Lord, move it out of the way. Lord, take it away. God, I need you right now. God, this storm been in my flesh too long. I've been going around in this circle too long. Bring me out of the wilderness. Bring me out of bondage. God, I need you right now. And we say, Lord, have your way, God. Move in this place. Move by your power. Move by your spirit, God. Everybody that needs healing, heal right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Heal of cancer. Heal of diabetes. Heal of leukemia. Heal of whatever it is, disease that it do. God, we know that you are more powerful than any disease. You said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And God, we stand on your word today. Anybody got a broken heart? God, we know that you are a heart fixer. Anybody mind out of control? We know you are a mind regulator. Anybody got burdens? Anybody got stuff on their back? We know that you are a burden bearer. So we say, God be God right now in my life. And whatever it is that I came in here with, God, I'm shaking it off right now. I'm shaking that job off. I'm shaking my finances off. I'm shaking my children off. I'm shaking my family off. I'm shaking that relationship off. Because God, I want to be free to give you glory. God, I want to be free to praise your name. And the Bible says, oh, the Son is set free. It's free indeed. So no longer power. I'm already a winner. I'm already a winner. Because you are the greatest power, God. We shall never be defeated. So God, we praise you like we're a winner. We praise you like we got the victory. God, we shake it off. We shake it off. Shake off my problems. Shake off my burdens. Shake off my pain. And I'm picking up peace. I'm picking up joy. I'm picking up power. I'm picking up understanding. Thank you, God. I'm taking off my grave clothes. I'm taking off my sad clothes. I'm taking off my depressed clothes. And I put on a garment of praise. And I give you glory. Because I got just what I needed from you. I got just what you have for me. So God, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making a way. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for delivering me. And we thank you that I'm not going through a battle. But I'm winning the battle. I'm winning the battle. I'm winning the fight. I'm winning the war. The struggle is over. The struggle is over. Because we've been only endured last night. But I made it to the morning. And God, I thank you for the joy. God, I thank you for the joy. God, I thank you for the joy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh God, the devil is a liar. We come to declare that he is a liar and he has no authority. God, we take it back. Everything that the devil stole, we take it back. Everything that the devil stole, we come to serve notice Satan. We come to tell your kingdom now. You can't have my family. You can't have my finances. You can't have my mind. You can't have my joy. I got power over the devil. I got power over the enemy. So today, Lord, we put him under our feet and let him know we've got the victory in Jesus. We've got the victory in Jesus. Victory on our child. Victory in our homes. Victory in our schools. We're a winner. Jesus. 
Jesus. Lift up your hands, all ye gates. Be ye lifted up the everlasting doors. Why? Because the King of Glory, He shall come in. God, who is the King of Glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. Who is the King of Glory? Mighty in battle. God, lift every spirit. Lift every spirit. Lift every spirit. Lift every spirit. Give us joy. Give us hope. And give us peace. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. And the struggle is over. Hey, 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 hey. The struggle is over. Hallelujah. Oh, any day now. Hallelujah. We're going to see the manifestation of the promise that you gave us. Any day now. We're going to get the good doctor report. Any day now. Somebody going to call us and say we got the job. Any day now. We're going to get the approval letter. Any day now. God's going to come through and do just what he said he's going to do. Thank you. Thank you, God, for shaking. Thank you, God, for shifting the atmosphere, moving us into a place where you can get the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your power. Do it for us right now. It is so, it is well, and it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, everybody, say amen. And come on and praise them like you already got it. Come on. I say praise them like you already got it. Hallelujah. Come on, praise them like you already got it. Hallelujah. Come on and give him glory. sure that we can come in, enter into his gates for thanksgiving, and in his courts of praise, so when you come in to know you're ready, I'm ready for whatever, hallelujah, whatever you want to do, Lord, do it right now, somebody give God one more praise, hallelujah, come on, let's give him one more praise, hallelujah, 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 glory to God, hallelujah, for those of you who would like to send your children to children's worship, um, we're starting right now. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to ask the uh, praise team to come and Katie's going to sing, He's My Rock. As we get our minds and our hearts prepared for worship, we're going to be in the book of Exodus. So go ahead and get your Bibles open to Exodus chapter 15. And while they're singing, I need you to worship with them. And quit acting like you're watching TV at the house. Amen. Amen. Come on and get in this worship. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
standing on the rock. Hallelujah. Come on, if anybody's standing on the rock this morning. Hallelujah. I said, if anybody's standing on the rock. Hallelujah. All of the ground is sinking sand, but we standing on the rock today. Hallelujah. He is my rock. Hallelujah. I said, he is my rock. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. And I encourage you to join us in Bible study. Join us in Bible study. As we have been walking through the Bible. Not just Bible study, but life study. Amen. We have plenty of room. So some of y'all can come out and give your pastor just one hour. From 6.30 to 7.30. Any of you know that's been coming, you know I'm already here. Before you get here, and at 7.30, I end wherever we are, we end at 7.30. I want to be a good steward of your time. So please, if you can come out, 6.30, 7.30, as we walk through the Bible and get our lives. Amen? Amen. Exodus chapter 15. If those of you in the Bible study, you already got the background information on this one. So you got a little inside information on this, because we were in Exodus this past two weeks. All right. Exodus chapter 15. Starting at the first verse, it says, Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior and Yahweh is his name. Verse 2 again, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God and I will praise him. My father's God, I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Father God, have your way. Speak now, Lord. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of this particular sermon from Exodus is Look in the Book and Find Out Who He Is. Look in the book and find out who he is. As a history teacher, I give my students projects or different things, people or places that they have to research and find out the history on that person or on that place. So, and they have to do research. Most of the time what they do is, they go straight to Google and they put in whether the topic or the question that I ask them and they click on that. And they go with the first link that they find. And they don't even look at the whole link, they go look at those three sentences that Google has after the search comes up. And then they'll come and say, well, Mr. Butler, I can't answer the question because it's not in here. I was like, well, did you click on the link? I did, it's right there. I said, no, you, you, you went to Google. <laughs> you have to click on the link and the link will show you more than just that little blurb. You got to go beyond the surface. Amen. You have to go deeper than what you just see on that little preview. In order to really grasp a movie, you got to go beyond just the preview that you saw before another movie. You got to go beyond the surface. And, and, and as a history teacher, part of my standards is to make sure that they use primary and secondary sources. That they use primary and secondary sources. A primary source meaning it's a first-hand account. Either that means it's written by the person or somebody was there to actually see it. 
So a news reporter who was actually on the scene and saw something happen, that's a first-hand account. Or an autobiography is a first-hand account. Or somebody that was walking with somebody is a first-hand account. So if you were thinking about the civil rights movement, somebody like uh, um, uh, um, Jesse Jackson could write a, a, a primary source on the civil rights movement. Why? Because he was in it. I couldn't, I could write a, what they call a secondary source, meaning that I got my information from a reliable primary source. All right, so I'm gonna get back to that in a minute. So we have to find primary and secondary sources, but I have to make sure that they get them from a reliable source. Because again, they go straight to Google and click on the first link that they see, but everything on there is not a reliable source. You know, it was a mean one day that you could believe everything because it was on the internet. Just because it was on the internet, people think stuff is true. But you got to make sure it is a credible and a reliable source. And when you turn in your research, you have to cite your sources. You've got to tell me where you got your information from because I teach you, I grade your test. So I know that you didn't know all of that on your own. <laughs> So cite your sources. Where did you get your information from? And I, I'm tying this in to knowing who God is. There is no way you can truly know who God is without getting in this book. I don't mean that you can't have an experience with him. I don't mean that you can't hear about him. But in order to have a relationship with him, you got to get in this book. You can't just go to Google and, and click on the first link you see or just read a little blurb. You got to go a little bit deeper in the word. I know you know the 23rd Psalm, but you got to go a little deeper than that. I know you know um, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But you need to go deeper in this word so that you can truly know who he is. This book is a credible source. You might as well say it's an authorized biography of who God is. Why? Because he didn't write it himself, but he authorized it. Amen. Like I told you, the Bible is it is it's God breathed. It was inspired by him to the writers to put those words on the paper about who he is. A lot of it is first-hand account. Moses, he wrote the first five books of the Bible. And there's no way in the world he, he could have known. He didn't know about what happened in Genesis because he wasn't born just yet. But from Exodus down through the wilderness until he died, that was a first-hand account. But the book of Genesis, he wrote that as a secondary source because he heard from those who was there. Because back then it was passed down through oral tradition and those began, they began to write on what they call scrolls and tablets, the history so it could be passed down from generation to generation. But if I was to tell you that I wanted you to do a research paper on God, this is the first book that you need to go to. Amen. Because everything you need to know about him is in this book. I know a lot of us have grew up on secondhand information because we say, well, my grandma used to say, or my mama used to say, or my preacher said, what do you say about God for yourself? What do you know about Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Can you truly say that he's all right? I have tried him and I know he's all right. So, so when you get in this book and you begin to read about him, you begin to learn about him, when you experience, you can say, oh, I know that was God. Hallelujah. Oh, I know that was him because I I read it in his words. Now I know it for myself. So here we are in the text, one account that gives good background information of who God is. Here we are in chapter 15. It shows us who God is. This is after Moses and the people of Israel have crossed the Red Sea. This is their song of Deliverance. This is an account of who they saw God was for themselves. Nobody had to tell 
Moses who God was. He saw it for himself. Nobody had to tell Aaron just how good God was. He saw it for himself. Nobody had to tell Miriam just who God, good God was. She saw it for himself. They was probably saying, looking around, saying, I've seen him do it. I don't know if i got any witnesses today that can testify. I've seen him do it for myself. I, I don't need you to tell me. I appreciate you telling me your testimony, but I've seen him do it for myself. I got a first hand account just how good God is because he's been good to me. Has he been good to anybody in here? Do I got any primary sources that seen God work a miracle? That seen God heal a body? That seen God lift up your head? That seen God pay a bill? That seen God pick a broken pieces? I don't know about you, but I can testify that I've seen God do it. And so that's what Moses was doing right here. He was telling in this song just what he saw God do. Moses started off with background information because he already knew who God was. So you can give somebody background information because you already know who he is. You see, Moses met him in chapter 3. He met him in the burning bush. And, 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 and God told him, I am the God of your father. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. And so at this point, Moses already knew who he was, but what happened was God had to show him some more times just who he is. You already know who he is, but God going to send you a reminder. Hallelujah. You already know what he can do, but God will send you experiences. God will send you people. God will send you things to remind you just how good he is. I don't know about you, but I need another reminder. Hallelujah. God, show me who you are. Hallelujah. God, show me that you are a healer. God, show me that you are a deliverer. God, show me that you are a way maker. I know God is can do it, but God, give me another reminder. I want to see him do it again. I want to see him make a way again. I want to see him open another door. I want to see him heal another body. I want to see God do it again. So he says, who is he? And he says, so God, so you might be asking Moses, if he was right here, who is God? Because I'm interviewing you. I'm trying to create this account of who he is. And since you saw him, Moses was one of the very few people who saw God. Yeah. The Bible says, only no man see God but live and live. Only a few saw him. Because God, Moses saw God, but he did not. He was privileged. Yeah. And so he had a first hand account of who he is. So Moses said, okay, you asking me who he is, uh, uh, Pastor Butler. Let me tell you what I found out about God. Starting at verse 2, he says, the Lord is my strength. That's part of your research. That, that, that you got to make sure, in your paper, you got to make sure you put that down. That the Lord is my strength. This word strength means power. It means might. It means boldness. And it means loud. And so when I, when I looked up the Hebrew in and I looked at it up, God, I, I got excited because I realized why Moses said this. And it was a twofold blessing. First, Moses couldn't defeat Pharaoh on his own. His arm was too big. He was too powerful. Because they were in, they were in bondage, so they didn't have access to the, to, the, to the weapons and to the things that Pharaoh's army had. But he couldn't do it in his strength. But guess who could? God. <laughs> he realized when, God, when Moses saw God in that burning bush, and the bush didn't burn up. Y'all missed that. A burning bush, and the bush didn't burn up. He knew there was power. When, he, when that rod turned into a snake, he knew that there was power. So he knew that I might can't beat Pharaoh, but I know who can, hallelujah. And you gotta get that in your mind. I might not be able to beat this cancel by myself, but I know who can, hallelujah. I might not be able to save my children, but I know who can. I might not be able to pay all of these bills, but I know who can. You gotta get I know who can in my spirit. 
spirit because I don't care what the enemy says, I know who can. Hallelujah. You said I couldn't make it, but I know who can. You said I wouldn't be that, but I know with his help I can do all things. So basically what Moses was saying, let God be who he is. He can do what you can't do, so let him do it. Get out of his way. Hallelujah. Come on, put that in your spirit. Get out of his way. Get out of his way. You in his way. You stopping God from doing what you need for him to do because you in his way. Get out of his way. Move over. And let God come through. Hallelujah. You moving too slow. Get out of his way. You looking everywhere else. Move out of his way. Pay attention. Get out of his way and let God do it. Not only that, it means boldness. When God told Moses, remember? When God told Moses what to go and tell Pharaoh, Moses said, I couldn't, I can't do it. Because Moses had a what? A stuttering problem. So he couldn't, he didn't have the courage and the, the, the strength to go and say what God told him to say. He told him to go and tell Pharaoh to let these people go. He said he couldn't do it, but God gave him boldness. To go and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. He called, he said, I'm going to give you the words to say, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what to say. I'm going to give you strength. And he said, well, who do I tell them? Sent me. He said to tell them that the I am sent me. The I am. And, and there's so much power in those two words. Hallelujah. And so soon as he said that, everybody knew exactly who he was talking about. And I don't care what you are facing. You're going to have holy boldness this year. You're not going to be scared in 2020. I'm not afraid of nothing that the devil throws at me. I'm not afraid of any sickness. I'm not afraid of any problem. I'm not afraid of any situation. Why? Because I, I am sent me. Hallelujah. And all I got is his name. That's enough for me. Hallelujah. What am I going to take on his job? I'm taking his name. What am I taking to the courthouse? I'm taking his name. What am I taking to the jailhouse? I'm taking his name. What am I taking to the doctor? I'm taking his name. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. You're all, if all you got is his name. That's enough. Because I am. That's it, me. I got his name. I dare you to just look at somebody. I say, I got over the, do your mask. I don't take your mask off and say, I got his name. I got his name. I got his name. I got his name. There's power in the name. He is my strength. Then he goes on to say, and my song. My song. And when I look that up, it means the subject of your praise. He is the subject of your praise. He is the object of your praise. He is the reason why we sing. Because Moses was saying, he's my song because look what he just did. Hallelujah. Hey, look what he just did. Hallelujah. I, I, I couldn't have did this by myself, but God did it. Hallelujah. And that's why I sing the way I sing. Uh, because I can look back there and the old saints will say they wonder, but I don't have to wonder because I already know how I made it over. I, I made it through hard trials and tribulations uh, because of God. I made it through that circumstance uh, because of God. I made it through that problem uh, because of God. And you can say, look where he brought me from. Look what the Lord has did in my life. And everything that happened to me, that was good. Guess what, church? God did it. God made a way. God saved my soul. Moses said, I got to sing because God's been good to me. When I look at my life and I begin to take 
take inventory. I can tell you that the Lord been good to me. Anybody know he's been good? Sing your song today because God is. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Her friend says, someone ask the question.
So I had to fight to make sure that I didn't fall into the trap that I've seen others in because once God got me out, I had to stay out. And so this was Moses was telling folks around him, this is my God. This is what my God can do. There's no greater God than my God. You can worship all you want, but this is my God. And you got to make this thing personal and tell some folks, this is what my God can do. I don't know who you worship. I don't know what church you go to or all that other stuff. That ain't important. But this is what my God can do. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. And so you got to make this thing personal. That don't mean you that you stingy because God's big enough for all of us to have a little bit of it. But I'm here to tell you, this is my God. The supreme God. And, and, and Moses says, because he is God, I will do two things. I will praise him and I will exalt him. And usually, if one of the Hebrew words for praise is Barak, um, Shabbat, Tehillah, Yada, Torah. But not this time. This one is Nava. It's a different word for praise. When, it's, it, when you hear the definition, you will, you, will, you will know what it is. It means to prepare him an inhabitation place. Right. It's to prepare him a place to dwell. So what Moses was saying is, this is my God and I am praising him because I need him to stay with me. If you know anything, you'd have learned this if you came to Bible study. That was a little bit shady. But um, <laughs> with the children of Israel, after they got free, they only worshiped where the glory was. Right. Wherever the cloud was, that's where they stayed. Yeah. Yeah. If the cloud didn't move, they didn't move. Right. If the cloud wasn't there, they wasn't there. And that's because Moses taught them that he and inha God inhabits the praises of his people. This was before David wrote this. See, David heard this and knew David heard this from Moses' song because he read it in the word. So I've come to tell you if you want God in your life, you got to give him praise. It's just that simple. If you want God in your house, you need to praise God in your house. Hallelujah. If you want God on your job, you need to praise God on your job. If you want God in your school, you need to praise God in your school. Wherever you want God to be, that's where you need to praise him. Hallelujah. So that's why I give God praise wherever I am. That's why I give God praise whenever I go somewhere. Because I want with me. Sometimes you know you're going in a crazy situation. That's why the Bible says enter into its gates with thanksgiving. Enter its courts with praise. If you know you're going to somebody's house that's a little bit crazy, you better start singing in the car. You better start giving God praise in the car. If you know the people on your job don't do that for raise hell, you better take the Holy God with you. Going in the door saying God is a good God. Yes, he is. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the new day. Because when you praise him, he comes down and he sits among you. And I don't know about you, but I need God. That's why I praise him. That's why I praise him. Everything else can go, but I need God to stay. Friends can go, but I need God to stay. Family, you can go on too, but I need God to stay. Because I need him in my life. So, he said, I, when I praise him, I will exalt him. And I'm finished. Exalt means to lift him up. Lift him up. Present him to the world to see. Moses was saying, I'm going to let everyone know just who my God is. The world needs to know. The world has to know. Just in that one verse, you can now tell me a lot about what you learned about God. You can, you can, you can give me about three or four, five, six paragraphs on what you know about God. He is your strength. Yes, he, is. he is your song. Yes. He has become your deliverance. He has given you victory. He is your God. He is my Father's God. I will praise him. 
I will exalt him. So when I, now that you know who he is by reading this, you can now, when you experience his strength, you can say, that's my God. When you experience his love, you can say, that's my God. When you experience his healing, you can say, that's my God. That's the one I read about. Huh? That's the one I learned about. Huh? Now I can testify and be an expert witness huh, on just how good God is. Huh? So as I get ready to close, huh, I wonder if I got any witnesses in the building huh, that will stand up on your feet today. Huh? Justify and say, I am an eyewitness of, of the goodness of the Lord. Because you know when something happens on the news, they, they find the most ghettoest, countryest person in the world to interview about the situation, and they don't know what they're talking about. But I don't have no ghetto. I don't have no crazy. People in here, I got some learned, educated saints of God. And if somebody asks you, just who God is, you can tell him, that's my God, that's my Savior, that's my Lord, that's my King, and I believe the kids, they know a little bit better than we did, because they sing a song that says, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, this I know, because the Bible tells me so. There's so much in this book uh, that you can know about Jesus. Uh, and when somebody asks you, uh, how do you know that he's a healer? You can say, because the Bible tells me so. When they ask you, how do you know that he's a deliverer? Tell me, because the Bible tells me so. How do you know he's going to make a way? Because the Bible tells me so. How do you know he's going to lift up your head? Because the Bible tells me so. How do you know he's going to give you joy? Because the Bible tells me so. How do you know he's going to give you understanding? Because the Bible tells me so. Anybody got something that the Bible told you? Anybody standing on the word of God this morning and say, yes, I'm a believer. Yes, I'm a receiver. Yes, I'm delivered. Yes, I'm free. Why? Because the Bible, I said the Bible, I said the Bible, it told me that he loved me. It told me that he would never leave me. And I'm so glad that the Bible Told me who he is. Get in this book so that you can really know who he is. It's a credible source. It's a reliable source. And everything you need to know about God is in this book. That's why you gotta hold it. That's why I say to hide it in my heart so that I won't see it and I can't see it. Because this word teaches me how to not sin. This word tells me how to defeat the enemy. That's why I said I meditated on both day and night. Because there's some stuff during the day that this book gonna help me get over. There's some stuff during the night that this book gonna help me get over. This book is like the American Express card. You bet I leave home without it because it's good to you. It'll pay your bills, yes it will. It'll hold you in the middle of the night, hallelujah. It will rock you, it will give you strength. You better get in this book and find out. Come on, will somebody be a witness for the Lord? Come on, come on, come on. Where my eyewitness is that? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout. I've seen him do it. I've seen him make a way. Hallelujah. He is my God. He is my strength. Get in this book and find out just who you are. I know you got your favorite scriptures, but go deeper. I know you got your favorite book, but go deeper. I know you only read it when you come in here on Sunday morning, but go deeper. Come to Bible study. This is a shameless plug. Come to Bible study as we go deeper in the Word because I want you to know 
who Jesus is. You'll be able to say, you can't make me down. Why? Well, because I know too much about it. I know it for myself. I found him to be a friend. I know too much about it. On him, I can't depend. There's nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. You try and find somebody and bring him to me. I'm going to show you that he still, he ain't got God. I don't care. He ain't going to honor my God. No, he can't. They can do that, but my God can do this. She did that, no, my God can do this. I don't care how much money you got, it still ain't greater than my God. My God. He's a big God. He's a great God. And if you love him, come on and give him praise one more time. Come on, give him praise one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for showing yourself to us. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Oh. Thank you for showing us who you really are. 
We love you, Lord. And this word is going to continue to do everything that you Thank said you. it was going to do. I believe every promise in this book yes. is still over my life. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Yes. It is so. Yes. It is well, and it's already done. Already done. Why? Because the Bible told me so. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, if you love God's word, give a praise right now. Come on. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Doors of the church, they've been open. But if you want to come and give your life to Christ, the person that this book leads us to, today is your day. Like I always say, Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen to you. And how do I know? Because the Bible told me so. So if that's you today, you coming for salvation, we ask that you come. The first call is for salvation. The second call is for fellowship. Would you like to fellowship? and become a part of this place we call Cedar Creek. We will welcome you today with open arms as we are growing this kingdom for Christ. Hallelujah. Because we know that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. It's not a debt that we owe, but it's a seed that we sow. God is a good God. And this is good ground to sow your seeds today. And we bless every giver in Jesus' name. Amen. just how good you are. We leave out here with the victory and the deliverance that you have given us, and we know that personally you are our God. So we're going to praise you, we're going to make a place for you to live, and we're going to lift you up so the whole world can know just how good you are. 
We love you today, God. As we leave this place, never your presence. We ask that you rest with us, God, with us. Be our strength. Be our shield. I plead the blood of Jesus over everybody. I declare and decree no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We are covered from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Our houses are covered. Our families are covered in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because they're connected to us. So we thank you, Lord. As we get deep in your word, God, until we meet again, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let everybody say amen. 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 Go and be blessed of the Lord and walk in every promise that God has given you. Amen.